it's such a beautifully made film, it's hard for me to believe it was made by a first time feature writer, director. Um, she did an incredible job and, and she had the wisdom to cast in the lead role an actress who I've been a fan of for a long time and she's here at the festival with four different films and that of course the great Andrea Riceborough. It's a real pleasure to introduce that very talented writer-director. Please welcome Christina Cho. Thanks guys for being here. Um, this is very surreal for me. Um, last time I was at Sundance, I slept in a laundry room, and now <laughs> can't believe I'm here um, premiering at the library. And so many people you know, take a small village to make a film, and a lot of people are here that really, you know, bled into this film and I just want to thank them for being here and thank all of you and um, yeah, hope that you enjoy the film, there'll be a Thank you, Cameron, Sarah, my lovely producers, Amy Lowe, Michelle Cameron, Zoe, amazing DP, David Gatnick, editor, Charlotte, production designer, Peter Rayburn, composer, Terry Benson, costume designer, Hajar, stick supervisor. I hope I didn't forget anyone. Ooh. Talk about this collaboration, because I know you were a producer on this film, Andrea. T tell me how this all got started. And you for you, Christina, okay. too. Um, I saw Andrea, you know, in her just amazing filmography. I saw her played Margaret Thatcher, I saw her play an IRA spy, I saw her do basically everything under the sun and was just blown away immediately and you know I sent her the script and then she responded and we talked and it was basically it was on after that. We just <laughs> we just got on so well and she understood what I wanted to do and I think she's brilliant and I think she's one of the best actresses of our generation and I'm just really proud of I'm really proud of the work that she did. And, you know, this is like, we met maybe three years ago. And it's I was like, emotional for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's so crazy to be standing here. It was, it was so difficult to get this made, but also it was so easy to get it made in so many ways, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we have three producers here. This is Amy and, and this is Michelle. Amy Lowe, Michelle Cameron. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to see us. Um, four years ago, yeah, we sat in a coffee shop and uh, Christina had been told about a previous project that was going to be like half black, half Asian cast, that people were just basically like, good luck getting that funded. Good luck getting that funded. <laughs> and I think we were both so ready and so hungry to see interesting, diverse, real characters on the screen. Um, we got on so well, and we have the same sense of humor, and so we just really spent the next four years kind of getting it together, and then when these incredible women came on board, that was when magic started to happen, finally. <clears throat> and Barbara Broccoli was our sort of like angel. Angel. <laughs> yes. And she, you know, she came to the project for all the best reasons. It was like, I love Andrea and I love the script. And that was it. It was very simple. It's, it's, like, it's a pretty really depressing and sad truth, but it's not easy to make a film with a female name, you know. But what's great, is thank you, Sundance, is I've got two here this year. You're the, you're the belle of Sundance, Andrea. <laughs> so, so very happy about that. But uh, it, it, it was difficult. Once we, well, once we got, um, you know, Steve on board and Jay on board. And Anne Dowd, who has five films, I think, at the end. And John Leguizamo. And John Leguizamo, yeah. yeah. Then it kind of all fell into place very naturally. And, yeah. You know, we started spending weird amounts of time together and hanging out a lot. Mm -hmm. Amy and Michelle, do you want to jump in at all about the process of getting here? I think Amy. <laughs> well, Christina is someone I've known for over a decade. And I've um, always wanted to work with her. and. It's just been, it's been an amazing process, really. It's been really great. 
But uh, yeah, can you talk time. a little bit about where the story came from? Yeah, let's talk about that. This is such sure. a beguiling um, character. Yeah, I mean, I, initially it was like, I was really, I'd seen this film, Wanda, that was made in the 70s. I was sort of blown away by this like morally ambiguous, complex female character. And I, at first, was like, what is, and you know, I just didn't understand, I had not seen that before. And so, you know, I was really inspired after seeing that to like, do the same and, and create a, a female anti-heroine um, and just layered character and you know, I just hadn't seen usually like the narrative driven by the male protagonist and it, you know the woman is the sister or girlfriend or you know read many scripts in that yeah I, I, as an actor receiving scripts is uh well, it's a little like trying to drip torture if you're a woman, <laughs> or, and especially an actor of colour who is a woman. That's, you know, that's, I can't even imagine how difficult that is. But, but for me, I get so many scripts that are sort of half people, you know, just not, not fully fleshed out characters. They've been penned by a guy, you know, dutifully and um, with, with as much grace as they can muster, but there are so few female writers and so few female voices out there. Um, and so when you come across a character like Lancy, and you suddenly, right or wrongly, you see yourself in this character, and you know, I, I see my, 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 her humanness I relate to, her manipulation, the sense of satisfaction of the way she sort of titillates and affects the world. All those things that we have in us are just kind of magnified in Nancy. And I've grown up in a film culture which confused me for a long time, where I just see a lot of women who I don't identify with at all, really. They're sort of these very chaste, uh, you know, uh, an unhealthy image, I think, to, to give out to young, to young women, to, to anyone. Um, and Nancy's deeply flawed and real, and it just made me think, what, what is the worst thing that I've done? <coughs> you know, what's the worst thing we've all done? And then that's kind of the place that Nancy lives in. Um, it was also, you know, inspired by a real life imposter that I encountered. Um, my basically my college professor, writing professor, who was, you know, someone we all worshipped, and he inspired all of us. And you know, he would teach us how to write from the heart and about truth. And he would say stuff like, "Write what breaks your heart, because what breaks your heart will mend your heart." And that's actually I still, you know, go by that when I'm writing, but. You know, I ended up graduating and found out that he, you know, you know, and he had told us he was a ghostwriter for the Hollywood franchise. And, it, you know, I found out that basically it was a fraud and he had basically lied to his family as well. And, you know, after a while, I just, you know, thought about it. I was like, well, does it really matter? Because what I took away from it was still really authentic and genuine. And, you know, I'm, you know he still was the most inspiring teacher I ever had. And, I think that theme, you know, is really at the heart of Nancy. It's like, does it matter if it's a lie? If the love is true, you know. The desire for certain credentials, um, the aching yeah. kind of need for attention is also really universal in this yeah. world that we live in because yeah. we, we don't know how to connect. We can't connect except unless we think we're something bigger. Right, and that's yeah. why in yeah. social media we're sort of all, you know, curating our identities and our facades for the our friends, the public, whoever it is. and you know, we're already being programmed to um, present our best self and not our real flaws. And you know, does it make us feel smaller? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Yeah. That's <laughs> disenfranchised. Disenfranchised. Confused yeah. about our own lives and separate from one another. Despite how the plot unraveled, are those true baby pictures of you, of your youth, <laughs> Andrea? I was not expecting that question. <laughs> <laughs> For any of you. <laughs> um, Yes, they were. Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she a cute baby? <laughs> I mean, I would say, you know, we got to a point where I think Andrea got more involved as a producer. She sent the script to Barbara Broccoli, um, who, you know, as I said, was very, her reaction was very simple and, and amazing. It's like, this is very Bondian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's fun. Makes sense. Well, the broccoli is a wonderful wooden hood. Um, and I've made, and I've worked with her before. We've made we've made uh, work together before, and she's so invested in female stories. So I, I knew that once you know once we got to the point where Christina felt comfortable enough for me to 
produce it as well, um, or well, you know, produce it, then, and we have these yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. we couldn't have done it without Amy and Michelle, you know, busting their ass and doing so, yeah. so much for the film. And yay, producers, the creative yeah. producers. They make no, the world no, around. When they do their job, it's invisible and you won't see it. But, um, you know, they, there's no way it would have happened without them. Um, so ultimately, yeah. And, the, you know, the village, we have a village of, the film gets made by, with a village. And it's, it's just like, I very, I'm very grateful for, for that. With the shifting of aspect and what sort of uh, dream to do that sort of thing right. visually. Zoe? That's you. <laughs> yeah, let's start our amazing DT Zoe answer that question. The aspect ratio is shifting, in case you didn't hear the question. We weren't sure which aspect ratio we wanted to shoot this film in. When Christina and I came together, I just remember Christina saying how much she loves 4-3, and I, I can go to that zone too. And, and so we were like, is the whole film 4-3? Is that, does she live in this box? Is she always confined? Is that how we interpret that? Is that how that works? But when we, I guess it was still a question in the air when we started scouting and thinking about Ellen and Leo's world and the fact that she departs her house and goes somewhere else. And we got up to these, you know, more open landscapes and their house and, um, we kind of just started feeling like we needed it to be more open, we needed it to be her world to expand, for there to be a little more breadth for her. And um, the moment that it happens isn't where we planned for it to happen. Um, we wanted it to be invisible. And we, I think our plan when we were shooting was that it would just be a hard cut from 4-3 to, you know, 69. Um, but that was a, a, our editor, uh, David Gutnick, who basically figured out where it should shift. So, uh, you can want to talk about that, but I love this question. Yeah. As a film nerd, I love it. It's an emoji that's going to be Yeah, I don't know that it's a question. Well, I guess uh, there's no sort of magic mystical answer. I think, I think we just wanted to make it subtle because everything about the film is you know subtle and you know so that it sort of sneaks up on you um like so many of the elements in the film so yeah it sort of is camouflaged by the length of the shot so yeah that was tell them where oh dude okay <laughs> well when she walks out of her when nancy walks out of her house and that, during that long pan uh, through the through the house before we cut to the road, that's sort of where that's where we do it. So that once we get on the road, it's like you really feel the subliminally or in any way that you feel um, the the openness of this new sort of journey. Well, a really important part of this film are our crew, some of whom are back there. Um, we had 80% women on our crew. Yeah. 80% yeah. POC? Yeah, there you go. We can have a clap for that one. Let's go back to the writing process, Christina. How did you, how did you find this story and get started with it? I mean, I... I think that I just had this idea of this imposter character first and that I knew that everything that she, you know, would fabricate or, you know, perform, if you want to call it, was based on emotional truth and that everything from the character came from it, you know, when she is like Donna Zagama's character and she says, um, what did she say? It's like, it's not, I just lied about when, you yeah, know. I just lied about when. You know, small detail, but like just that, you know, that she had actually lost a child and, you know, knew what that had felt like. And, you know, these are like subtle backstory things. But I mean, I think ultimately I was really interested in the, the emotional core of who Nancy was, and that's where I usually start writing. And then, you know, I think plot is informed by the character, and I don't believe in the other way around, I guess. I sort of just start there. And, 
But you know, writing is hard. It's fucking hard, I, I have to say. <laughs> it's just hard, and you just, I don't know, just try to keep at it, I guess. I don't know what the magic answer is. No shortcuts, right? No. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I, I've never seen it before, so I'm a little bit... Oh my god. Now. Wow. So it's very moving. I thought it was beautiful. And it's... Uh, very incredible woman, by the way. Incredible. <laughs> take on loneliness and how really everyone, even this very nicely situated couple that, you know, their tragedy is pretty long in the past, are aching to have this faith in, you know, center in their lives and how uh, really all of us can relate to that. That's such a universal thing. Like and loneliness and wanting to connect is, is pretty uh, universal and just uh, really locked out by, by the story. That's a great place to end. Thank you so much for this incredibly talented.